Hey guys! In this video, let's take a look at what needs to change in the equation of a function in order to see a reflection on the x-axis, a reflection on the y-axis, and a reflection on both the x-axis and the y-axis. So, let's get straight to it. So by now, we should have a good idea of reflections applied to quadratic equations, but in this lesson, we'll be generalizing this concept so that they apply to all functions. So if we were given the function g of x is equal to f of negative x, then we would know that the graph of g of x would be a reflection of the graph f of x along the y-axis, since the negative sign is found within the brackets. So let's put some numbers into this and try some examples. Let's say that f of x was equal to 1 over x. Then, since g of x is equal to f of negative x, we'd get g of x is equal to 1 over negative x. This negative sign applied to the x would result in a reflection along the y-axis, like so. Now, instead if we were looking at an f of x that was equal to square root of x, then our g of x would be equal to square root of negative x. And if we represented this on the graph again, we'd see that applying the negative sign within the brackets reflects the graph along the y-axis as its reflection point. Great! Now, let's take a look at a different transformation. What would happen if we applied the negative sign on the outside of f of x, like so? Well then, in this case, we would see a reflection along the x-axis instead. So let's say that our f of x is a parabola represented as x squared. Then our g of x would be negative x squared, which would be represented by a reflection along the x-axis. So if we were given yet another parabola, for example, that was shifted horizontally to the right and vertically to the top, like so, represented by the following function of f of x, then what would g of x be according to the given transformation? Well, since g of x is equal to negative f of x, we can replace the entire function here to get the negative of all of this. So expanding this gives us the following. And if we plotted out this graph, we would indeed end up with this graph being reflected along the x-axis like so. Now, you might be wondering, huh, why did we end up with a negative 4 if we only wanted to perform a reflection? Wouldn't that also cause a vertical shift? And the answer to that is yes, it would cause a vertical shift in the opposite direction. This is because the graph started off with its vertex 4 units above the x-axis, and in order to reflect the graph along the x-axis, it must compensate for this gap of 4 units by being translated 4 units in the opposite direction from the x-axis. Now, if we didn't apply the negative to the whole function and left the 4 as a positive, then we'd be looking at a vertical reflection along the vertex point. So always be sure to remember that if we're multiplying the whole function by a negative sign, then we'd be effectively reflecting the graph along the x-axis. Awesome! So let's take a look at one last function and see if we can identify what the graph will look like after applying some transformations. Here is our f of x, and here is our g of x, which is a function of manipulating f of x. So looking at the graph of f of x, how will the graph of g of x look after applying these transformations? Well, just by looking at where the negatives are, we can see that there will be a reflection on the x-axis as determined by this negative sign on the outside, as well as a reflection on the y-axis as determined by this negative sign on the inside. So, if we wanted to actually apply it in terms of the equation, we would see that the negative x in here would become this, and the negative sign on the outside would apply to the whole equation. And remember, as a result, this causes a reflection of the graph along the x-axis. So distributing the negative here would give us this final answer. Good! 
So just remember that a reflection along the y-axis involves the x on the inside to be multiplied by a negative, while a reflection along the x-axis involves the whole function to be multiplied by a negative. Well, that's it for this video. Make sure to practice lots of questions, and we hope to see you in the next lesson.